Happy Sabbath, Happy Sabbath Adventist Hope Community Church. In Ongata Ronga, I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God that you are gathered to begin the Sabbath. You know, as the sun sets on Friday, it is a very important time for us Seventh-day Adventists. We put a break to the cares of the world. We have done all the shopping. We have done all the cleaning. Our Sabbath clothes are ready for tomorrow. And you know, the, the food that is associated with the Sabbath is ready. This is just a good time as we gather here we are just celebrating the moment saying hey we thank God for the Sabbath this Sabbath actually makes a difference for us Seventh-day Adventists I want to thank you so much Adventist Hope Community Church may the good Lord bless you and thank you for this privilege to invite me to come and share the Word of God with you may God bless you you and you and you and you and even the other one May the good Lord bless you so much. I would like us to pray, then we share the uh, word of God, and then we'll say, let you go. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you may bless us. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that your favor may be on us. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we listen to your word, we'll be edified. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'll not leave this place the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The message I would like to share with you, friends, is titled, Are You Angry with God? Are you angry with God? I shared this message a few days ago in my blog. And by the way, for those who don't know, I just decided to put some energy on online ministry so that we can reach many more people who are only found online. So I have a blog, I have a YouTube page where... Just share the gospel, and I want to thank God for the results that are coming out. So, a few days ago, I shared this message, are you angry with God? And I thought that this, this evening, I will also come and ask you the same question. Are you angry with God? Are you angry with God? You see, I've ever been angry with God myself, because I prayed to God Many years ago, I had a, a dream. I had a dream. I wanted to leave this country and go and live in America because after high school, I was told that America was such a wonderful land to such a good place and I wanted to go there but I didn't get a visa and I had prayed and fasted and I was angry with God. I want to ask you friends, are you angry with God? I've also been angry with God because during the dating scene of my life, I, I eyed somebody and I said, God, I want that one. I want that one. And I prayed and fasted, but God did not answer the prayer by giving me that one. And at that time, I was angry with God. I just came to ask you, friends, are you angry with God? There was a time I prayed for school fees. Please, God, I need school fees. I need school fees. But I missed that time in school. I did not go to school. Are you angry with God? Truth be said, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we get angry with God. We expect him to do certain things and he doesn't. Are you angry with God? We expect him to answer the prayer of healing a loved one. Then after all the fasting and prayer, the loved one dies. And there is a mixed feeling. You want to trust God. You want to believe all is well. But you are angry that God did not come through. I just came to ask you, friends, are you angry with God? We know God had the power to prevent these things from happening. But he allowed and now we get angry. I just came to ask you friends, are you angry with God? Ask yourself, examine yourself. Are you angry with God? Are you having issues with God? Are you angry with God over a certain matter? You prayed that the contract gets renewed. It was not renewed. Are you angry with God? You prayed that the relationship survives, but the relationship did not survive. Are you angry with God? At times we feel angry with God because it seems God is letting the devil have his way too much. 
Surely God, how could you let the devil do that? Surely, God, how could you let that happen? Surely, it seems you are allowing the devil too much. Like in Job's case, and I'm suffering. Surely, God, I know you can stop this. Why don't you stop it? Are you angry with God? Are you angry with God? We get angry because God, against God when we expect him to reward us for things we have done for him. That makes us angry. Surely, God, I was going to preach. How can the police arrest me for speed, delay me? Now I have missed the sermon. Surely, God. I, I mean, I was doing this for you. I expected th the least you could do, God, is reward me. Is reward me with a free pass through the police barrier. Are you angry with God? Are you angry with God? Did you expect that God should conduct himself in a certain way, but he didn't, and now you are angry with God? Are you angry with God? You expect God to reward you. I mean, I've been an elder in the church for a long time. I was born and brought up in the church, God. I've always been a church guy, God. Surely, is this too much for you to do for me? Are you angry with God that he didn't take into consideration you are many years in the church? Your service in the church? Your participation in the church, your contribution in the church. Are you angry with God that he did not put that into consideration? I just came to ask you, friends, are you angry with God? After being active in church and never missing any worship, at least giving me a scholarship to a university I've dreamt of would, 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 wouldn't be too much to ask. At, at, at least resolving this marriage issue wouldn't be too much to ask, considering that I've never missed church. Considering that I've always been the one who takes too much of church work. Surely, fixing this marriage issue should have been too, too, too difficult for you, God. Are you angry with God? Surely, God, all that tithe and all that tithe and all that tithe and offering. And my investment is sinking. Surely, God, could, could, couldn't you consider even the tithe and offering I've been giving? No, I just came to ask you, friends, are you angry with God? Then after all the prayer, prayers and fasting, we don't get what we want. Surely, God, didn't you say that knock and the door will open? Why hasn't the door opened? We get angry with God when we pray to prevent a heartbreak, but the heartbreak happens anyway. Are you angry with God? Some get angry with God briefly, then resume a good relationship with God. That happens. People get angry with God, but after a short time they come to their senses. Oh, okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We are okay with God, we are cool. But there are others who get angry with God completely and they lose faith in God. And instead of moving on to whatever they wish to, they hang around to condemn Christianity or any other belief in God, hoping that in that manner they get back at God. How juvenile of them. Sometimes because we are angry with God, there are people who get angry with God and they get through it and they come back to fellowship and life goes on. They love the Lord again. But there are people who it's too much. It's too much. They abandon Christianity but they, they hang around so that they can abuse Christians, so that they can challenge Christians, so that they can challenge Bible verses, so that they can challenge belief because they believe when they are doing that, they are getting back at God so that God will know that they are angry. How juvenile, how childish that is. I mean, if you are so angry, why don't you just leave? If you are so angry, why don't you get out of here? Why are you still hanging around? Are you throwing tantrums? Isn't that childish? Doesn't that mean that you, you just really want a warm, nice hug and be assured that you are still loved? And so you say you have left, you are angry, you don't want anything to do with the church. Then you hang around to tell everybody who cares to listen. Why didn't you leave? Are you angry with God? Those are just scenarios of anger that come. Are you angry with God? I'm asking you, brothers and sisters. 
Sometimes we want to call everyone's attention to the fact that we no longer love God or believe in him. We act like jilted lovers. Jilted lover, rejected, no longer loved, but doesn't want to go, is dogging the other lover. Mm, I saw today you wore the shoes I bought you. I thought you left. You are still checking out what I wear. Clearly you didn't leave. You declared you have left, but you have not left. Are you angry with God? I just came to ask you today, are you angry with God? Sometimes others in anger go quiet and just retreat from social life and hide in their pain until when provoked on faith matters, then all hell breaks loose and the bottled up anger is spewed mixed with their former knowledge of scripture. Sometimes that happens. That some get so angry with God that they bottle it up and go quiet until the day you dare them. Until the day you dare them. And the bottle comes off with the, the bottle top comes off with such pressure and you will regret that you hung around them because their anger against God has been bottled up. You don't need to bottle up that anger. I just came to ask you, friends, are you angry? with God. Others decide to express their disappointment in God by living openly a life that is contrary to God, only harming themselves because you can't harm God by harming yourself. Are you angry with God? So angry that you have decided that you are going to smoke and drink. When you smoke and drink, the smoke harms you, the drink harms you. It does not harm God. You are trying to punish yourself hoping that that punishment will be punishing God. I just came to ask you, my friends, are you angry with God? Are you so angry that you have foolishly reached a point where you harm yourself hoping that that harming yourself will in one way or another harm God? Are you angry with God? Are you angry with God? You see, friends, we get angry with God because our expectations did not match the reality. What we expected from God and what really happens are not the same. So we get angry. We get angry with God because we thought prayer is a way of manipulating God. We thought that if I pray for the matter once and God doesn't give me anyway, it was only once. But if I pray ten times, God must surely take to account the number of times I've prayed. But you know, friends, God does not respond to prayer depending on how much pressure you pile on him. No, it's not about how much pressure you have piled on God. But sometimes that's what we think. And so we feel like, God, didn't I pile enough pressure? I mean, I fasted. I fasted, God. I have ulcers, but I fasted. I am diabetic, but I fasted. Surely, God, even with the fasting, you didn't respond to it. Are you angry with God? We get angry with God because we thought fasting is one thing God can't resist and will just do our will once we fast. A misunderstanding of fasting. We think that fasting is supposed to put pressure on God. Let me remind you, friends, prayer and fasting does not change God even a minute. Prayer and fasting is designed to change you and change me to be ready for the answer that God will give. God already has an answer, but we, don't, we are not ready for the answer. So by fasting and praying, we get ready for God's answer by fasting and praying. We get ready for God's answer by fasting and praying. And so when you fast and pray and you expect that you will pile pressure on God to do something, then you are still young in faith. You better grow up today. Fasting and prayer is never designed to, to, to put pressure on God. Are you angry with God that after fasting and prayer he didn't respond to you? We get angry with God because we thought the cumulative good things we have done for him should influence him to treat us favorably. Because you gave a piece of land for the church to be built back at home. 
because all your tithe and offering is channeled back to your village church, which is a mistake. You can't be worshipping with us here and your tithe and offering goes to the village. How, what services do you expect from us when you don't give us the tithe and offering right here where we are? Your tithe and offering you send to the village. Are you showing allegiance to God or to your village? Are, haven't you become a village worshipper? A worshipper of the village. That's what you have become. Because you are so keen to show your allegiance to the village. Tithe and offering you send it there. Camp meeting offering, you send it there. The church where you are worshipping is suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we think that God should respond to the cumulative total of the things we have done. And then he sees that uh, uh, this guy has done too much. This lady has done too much. Let me now favor them. God does not operate that way. We get angry with God because we expected that our understanding of scripture is enough to influence him to always do what we want. We have read Ellen G. White, Ministry of Healing, Early Writings, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1 to Volume 9, Steps to Christ. And now we feel that God owes us a favor because we have read these things. We share them online. We pray. We speak King James Version of English even in our day-to-day -day talk. And now we expect that God, surely, you must respond. And then God doesn't. Are you angry with God? Is that really how you expected to buy God on your side? We get angry with God when he doesn't act obviously as we expected. There are things we expect God to do, but he doesn't do. He didn't harm the person who harmed us. He didn't kill the one who stole from us. We get angry because we had sworn that whoever did it will see God's wrath and nothing has happened yet. Are you angry with God? Somebody robbed you. Somebody stole something and you say, whoever stole, you will see. God will not let this week pass. And the week pass, God did nothing. And you are now angry with God. Because you wanted God to act like your local magician. You give orders, he does what, he, what you want. Is he, your, is he your local magician or is he the almighty God of the universe? Is that the reason why you are angry with God? Are you angry with God? I just came to ask you, friends, are you angry with God? Are you angry with God? Are you angry with God? That you said, whoever has been speaking negatively about me, I know there are people in this family. I know there are people in this church. I know there are people in this community. I know there are colleagues that work here. You have been working for my downfall. I know. And God is going to show you before this year ends, you will see what God will do. You will see it. Surely you will see it. And then the year passes. Nothing has happened. <laughs> now you get angry with God. What's wrong with God? Nothing happened. All the people I thought were harming me, they are alive and kicking and thriving so well. Surely, God, couldn't you for once prove to them that you are mine and just... Now oh, you are angry with God. What's wrong with you, God? Can't you do these things? Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to learn from John. What should we expect when we are angry with God? We are going to read three passages from Jonah. Jonah chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says, But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became very angry. God forgave the people of Nineveh, and Jonah said, This is wrong, and he got very angry. Do you know that there are times God can bless your enemies? He will not kill them the way you expected. He will not make them suffer loss the way you expected. He will not give them a serious disease the way you expected. They will just continue thriving and doing well. And now you get angry. Surely God, you become like Jonah and say, God, I wanted you to destroy these people, but you have forgiven them. And Jonah got angry with God. Jonah chapter 4 verse 4. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? God asks John, is it right for you to be angry? And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, every time we are angry with God, he asks that question. Do you have a right to be angry? 
you are angry because I didn't punish your enemies. But when you were an enemy of other people, I didn't punish you too. If I had punished you that time, you will not be here. So if I showed you mercy and I showed the mercy, where is the problem? Do you have a right to be angry? <laughs> Do you have a right to be angry? John chapter 4 verse 9. Jonah chapter 4 verse 9. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about that plant? It is, Jonah said. And I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. If there is anyone who is a good example of anger, is brother Jonah. The man was so angry. The man was so, so angry. He was so angry that he told God, I'm angry to the point of death. I'm ready to die. So angry. You see, friends, the text I've just read tells us that Jonah the prophet was angry with God. God sent him to Nineveh and Jonah didn't want to go because he feared that God will not punish the people of Nineveh. Jonah ran to Tarshish, but God forced him to go to Nineveh. Jonah preaches and the people repent and God forgives the people. Jonah gets angry because God has easily and simply forgiven these people. When Jonah expressed his anger, God responded as he always does. The first response of God was, do you have a right to be angry? And if today, my brother or my sister, you are angry with God, God is asking you the question, do you have a right to be angry? Do you have any right to be angry? That's what God is asking you. God of heaven, creator of universe, all-knowing is asking you, do you have a right to be angry? Whatever you are angry about. Isn't the whole world his? Don't you belong to him? Do you have a right to be angry? God responded to Jonah. And what did God say to Jonah? When, when, when God discovered that Jonah was angry, God showed his love and care for Jonah because God wanted to win Jonah back. What did God do? Jonah chapter 4 verse 6. While Jonah was very angry, he walked out of Nineveh and went to sit down and say, I want to sit and see that, that city perish. God in his kindness ordered a certain plant to quickly grow and give the man a shelter in his anger. Hey, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I believe wherever you are, you have said amen. What a mighty God we serve. That even in our anger, God continues to show kindness, yet we are angry against him. We are angry against him, yet he shows us favor. We are so angry against him. So angry against him. And then God sends a shelter. He says, oh, by the way, my angry servant needs a shelter. And he sends a shelter. In your anger against God, he causes your child to be the first one in school, number one in their class. In your anger. In your anger, you test COVID-19 negative after interacting with the people who are positive. In your anger, in your anger. That's how our God is. That in your anger, your business flourishes. In your anger, the weight you have been trying to cut actually comes down. In your anger, things go correctly. Because even in our anger, God remains gracious. You need to expect a gracious God. Why is he gracious? Because he is giving us time to come to our senses and return to him. And so while he's waiting, he does not wait while punishing us. He waits by being kind to us. Don't take advantage of the kindness of God and think that now he is too weak and does not deserve honor and praise. Are you angry with God? You see, friends, getting angry with God may not immediately earn you his wrath. 
and you may think he can't retaliate or even think he doesn't exist because he continues being so kind until it it seems like in your anger you have gone scot free by ignoring God and abusing God and what have you but you need to know that eventually God will punish all sins you need to know that eventually those on the wrong will pay for it you need to know that while meanwhile nothing may change God is patient and will continue showing his kindness because he's a gracious God. Are you angry with God and yet enjoying the favors of God? Do something and turn to God. Are you angry with God? Much may not change, but he will continue showing you love and care. What does the church say? Amen. Number two, when angry with God, God will in one way or another come and rectify the issues. John chapter, Jonah chapter 4 verse 4, God answers the questions of Jonah. God answers the questions of Jonah. In, in Jonah chapter 4 verse 4, God answers, the Lord said, do you do well to be angry? You know, God comes to answer. I want you to know that whatever makes you angry with God, God will come with a response. God will come and say, hey, why are you angry? Do you have a right to be angry? Let's go through it. Let's discuss what makes you angry. Come now, let us reason together. God will avail himself in your anger. He will avail himself to respond. God will directly or indirectly reply. God will answer us using someone. God will answer us using situations. God will answer us in any of his mysterious ways. God will appear in ways we least expected. Are you angry with God? Expect him to respond to the particular contentious issue. If you are angry with God, he will respond. Don't just expect him to come shouting down the ceiling or from the sky. He may send somebody, you may hear something on TV or radio, or even the answer may be coming to you through this sermon, or it may come through another one. If you are angry with God, he will come through and answer you. He responded to John. So are you angry with God? Expect that he will continue being good to you until you come to your senses or until you are ripe for punishment. Are you angry with God? He will answer whatever issue is troubling your relationship with him. God will respond. When angry with God, expect that the final challenge will be on our side, not his. He will, not, he will leave us to decide. God clarified issues and left Jonah to make up his mind. You see, eventually the book of Jonah ends by God telling Jonah, Listen, I know you don't care about the people of Nineveh. But I've also counted that there are 120,000 heads of cattle in Nineveh. If I just destroyed that city, I would destroy even their 120,000 cattle of head. Don't you care about the animals? If you really want me to show my anger against Nineveh, don't you care about the animals? And the book ends there. The ball is in Jonah's court. If you are angry with God, the ball will never be on God's court. It will be on your court. The back will stop with you because God will respond and it will be you to undo your anger and understand that you are the clay and he is the potter and he will shape you in whatever shape he wants to shape you. Are you angry with God? Expect that finally you are the one to make the decision. He responded to Jonah and the book ended there. Why? The book ended there because God had su sufficiently responded to Jonah. God will respond to you or has already responded. It is you to come back to fellowship. It is you to come back to the Lord. It is you to restore your relationship with God and repent your short-sightedness. Are you angry with God? You see, friends, God does not engage in an argument with us forever. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, the Bible says that my spirit will not contend with man forever. God will not engage us in a grudge. God does not keep a grudge. And God does not have bottled up anger. He will make himself clear and leave us to make up our minds. Are you angry with God? The ball will soon be on your court as God makes his position clear and waits for you to decide. Are you angry with God? Accept it that I'm angry with God. Don't be on denial. 
Are you angry with God? Do not pretend that all is well. Are you angry with God? Express your anger to God as Jonah did. Because God can handle it. Don't express it to us, to your parents, to your spouse, to your neighbors, to your church leaders. You express to them, are they God? If you are angry with God, express your anger to God. Leave us alone. If you come to us, we'll only give you counseling and prayer. Are you angry with God? He will still care for you. Are you angry with God? He will respond to you. Are you angry with God? Do not be angry forever because finally the decision is yours to remain angry or not to remain angry. He will resolve the issues as soon as possible. My brothers and sisters, I want to wish you a happy Sabbath and say that may our relationship with God get better after each bout of anger has been poured out to God and the issues have been sorted. I pray that each of us will be free with God and tell God what makes you angry. And after that bout of anger, I pray that your relationship with God, and my relationship with God will be rectified for the glory of his name. May the Lord bless you so much. Whatever anger issues, May God fix it and may our relationship get better and better until when we get to that kingdom where we will meet with him face to face, face to face with Christ, my Savior. Face to face, what will it be when with rapture I behold him? Jesus Christ who died for me. When we meet him face to face, we will ask him all the questions and he will respond. May the Lord bless you so much until that day. In Jesus' name, amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Adventist Hope community in Nairobi. Bless this church. Bless each member. Prosper them. May their spiritual lives grow answer their prayers, and if there are any anger issues, may they be exposed and rectified. And we pray that on that day, all of us will receive you in the clouds when you come the second time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a happy Sabbath.